is going on everybody? I am coming at you with a review of this, the Sunlu Filament Dryer S2. This is the second rendition of their fill dryers um, upgraded from the S1. I was sent this by Sunlu to do a review and this is the only filament dryer I own. I don't own another one, so I'm gonna give you a first timer's experience with this thing. Overall, I mean, it is a beautiful design over their first one. I really like it, I'm digging the shape. Um, one of the upgrades that they did, I did notice that the S1, people were printing clips for here to keep the lid from falling all the way open. Um, this one actually opens just like that. And as you can see on the inside, there are two heating pads, the coils, one is here and one is up at the top. Now, this is your cutout for your filament. Goes right through here, comes out in the one spot. It does have rollers for your filament roll. Um, the one thing that I have seen a couple other reviewers talk about with this is that they don't have a space to put their silica gel or desiccant or whatever you want to call it. Um, the only thing that I have found that works because there's really nowhere to stick it because your filament roll actually will sit every bit of this. Um, the only thing that I have found that works is what I'm actually printing here. It is one of the, let's see if I got an empty spool. It's an insert that goes inside of here and sits inside of it and you put your desk inside there. So I'll have a dedicated one just for my filament dryer. Um, that way when it's printing, it'll soak up any moisture that's, that it's drying out of the filament. Cause that was one of the other things that I was looking for when I was using this in the past week and a half that I've had it. Um, the S1 dryer, you always see condensation build up. This one, I have not seen it. With their 360 degree heat inside this thing, I have not seen any type of moisture buildup on any of the lid that I have noticed. But then again, when I am printing for the time being until that is done, because I just started that one, I have been taking extra silica packets and I will actually stuff them inside and it'll print. And if you set them in there just right, they won't roll out as it's going because it is kind of a, a tighter fit. Um, but once that gets done, I'll just open these up, put them in that, and then put them inside the rolls as it prints so it's not in the way. Um, I have been using this for a while and I've kind of learned some quirks about it. I have a couple rolls of filament that the rollers inside this thing don't like. They are these rolls, spools right here. It's from 3D Max, which is the same as the g -Tech or G-Tech, I think. I think that's the brand, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to look it up. Um, but the problem I was running into is that they are not this nice type of injection molded. They are kind of like a snap together and you'll get burrs. And the problem that I found is that as they get stuck on the rollers in here, it will, let's see if I can do this. It will take and pull the roll forward into the lid, kind of like that. And if it pulls it tight enough, it actually pulled the whole filament dryer over on my desk. And I sit for a little while and I was looking at this and I was puzzled because that's just a flush little part that it comes out of. And for anybody that knows this, I like to tinker with things. And I found out that this is my little hack. I use a piece of PTFE tubing and I was curious if it would work and it actually is a tight enough fit to where when it slides in, it won't come back out. So this is actually how I've been running my filament. And on the inside, you can see that it sticks through a little bit. You can stick it through as much as you want, as much as you need for how full your spool is. I've kind of found out that just that much right there 
is perfect for this, even with a full spool. Um, that's my little hack, my little top secret thing that I use, because if not, I have found that I was worried that I would have to sit this in line with my extruder so it won't pull it over because it's got more mass this way than it does this way. Um, some of the specifications on this thing, it is a max power of 48 watts. Um, the temperature range, so their S1 dryer goes up to 50 degrees Celsius. It's as high as it would go. The S2, 70. So, from what I understand, the S1 was good for like PLA and your low temp stuff. But this, you have to be careful because there are preset settings and we'll get into that in just a couple minutes. Um, this, you can do PETG, you can do nylon, you can do ABS, everything now. This covers all filaments for drying now, not just one hit wonder kind of thing. Um, what else is there? This is cool. Their power port is on the back, which works out perfect for my setup because this doesn't sit right in line with my printer. It actually sits off to the side and against my wall. The way my desk is set up, it actually sits like right here. And I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can see this. Now this is where my dryer normally sits. I have a printed stand here that's directly in line with my printer. Uh, so if I'm not using the dryer, I can actually have this over here. This sits back out of the way and I'll plug it in and we'll get this thing turned on. All right, so when you plug it in, you'll notice that you get an on off button. Now, when I first received this, being a basically a tester and reviewer, I was not sent anything but the filament dryer itself. No instructions, no nothing. So I had a crash course on how to run this thing. I watched a couple other people's reviews on it and kind of got a good sense on how it works. It's the best way I could explain it. So your on off button, it's not a tap, it's a double tap and that turns the dryer on. Now, if you look, it automatically turns on for PLA, preset of six hours, your relative humidity inside the case, it shows up here. This is the temperature inside the case. This is the temperature you want it to be. Now, I learned that this thing is awesome. It heats up extremely fast, especially if you have a roll of filament in it. It can, it can take a little bit longer depending on how cold your filament is sitting. Um, this thing is awesome. I have seen, they say that it's supposed to take no time to dry filament out. Honestly, I don't know what the relative humidity is supposed to be in a roll. But I do know that if you let this sit for roughly a day, like 24 hours to right around there, you can get it down to almost 29% relative humidity inside of this. It takes no time at all. Um, one of the other cool features is if you notice the LEDs on it. The old fill dryer didn't have anything but a screen that just gave you the temperature that it was going to. I have learned this will do this all the way up until it heats up to the temperature that you want it set at. And when it does that, it will actually stop. This is actually supposed to be down to 50, not 51, I apologize. Um, it'll actually stop doing this. Now there are two different settings for your LED. There's actually three. You have off, on, and then run. I prefer on because I can glance over and make sure that my stuff's at temperature or if it's turned off. I mean, the whole screen will shut off. It stays on like this. The backlight does not shut off. Um, with it set to on, 
you hit the set button, you'll scroll down with it set to on, it changes it to run. This does not stop, it constantly spins like this. I didn't care for it. I, if it did this, it'd be cool if it changed to a different color when it got to the set temperature, but it, it just constantly runs. It's cool, but I like knowing when my stuff's up to temperature and ready to go. I go back down to LED, there's off, and there's on. That's how I leave it. Um, I come back up, you see it's up to 43C now. This thing takes no time to heat up. I mean, you're talking what, seven, three minutes now, and it's already up to 43C. It takes no time for this thing to heat up. Um, you can go up to a max of 70C, and your time, I have not really messed with. I usually adjust it for the length of my prints, or like an hour more, but I do not know what the max time is. We'll find out real quick though. This thing doesn't seem to have an end. It's still going, holy cow. Okay, so 99 hours is how long you can set the, the dryer for, which I have no clue what that would be. Oh, and see, I accidentally tapped the, the power button. Oops. And it, anytime it shuts off and turn back on, it's automatically set for PLA, automatically set for six hours. And whatever you have that setting at for PLA, that's what it comes back to. Um, the material types, you have PLA, PETG, TPU, and ABS. And PA, which I don't even know what PA is, or PC. So you have, was that, one, two, three, four, five, six, six different types of filaments that you can use with this thing. And it, I'm, I don't know what to say. I mean, I love this thing. I've had it for a while and it, it's already warm on the inside. It's, it's awesome. I love it. I would highly recommend one of these. And out of all the fill dryers that I've seen or filament dryers, because I think fill dryer is copyrighted by Sunloo, um, all the other filament dryers from what I, the reviews that I've seen, this one is the most high tech, I guess you could call it. The other ones you set a temperature, it goes for that temperature. You set it for a time, it goes for that time. But this one is like above and beyond all the others. And there you go. So it was three, four minutes, four, five, six minutes total. And you're already at temp. And the green ring stays on. Sorry about that. I had an interruption that came into the room. But as you can see, the green ring is on now. And... It's a little different now on the time-wise because of the interruption. But um, I just swapped the filament out during the interruption. I am now running some PETG in here. And I'm testing this for the simple fact that this spool has a broke side on it. And we're going to see how well it actually rolls around in this. Um, but I wanted to get some PETG running for you guys to see how well it runs, just to see. And this is running with 33% humidity inside there. Now I had this roll sitting out for a couple days. It was actually sitting on the floor next to my air conditioner vent. So I was hoping to collect moisture and I took it out of the bag. Don't know if I got any moisture in it. By the looks of that, it hardly has any moisture in it. And I really don't know how low the moisture content is supposed to go, but as you can see, it's already doing pretty decent. So, and this is the setup, because you know, I am had this running the other day, it's actually done now. I'll move it out of the way so you can get a better look, and move this out of the way so you can see better. This is how I have it set up. The dryer sits right here, my PTFE tubing comes around, goes through my 
uh, filament sensor and then goes into my extruder is the way I have it set up. Now, you can do a solid line. I don't recommend it because you'd have to find a way to get the filament back. So what I actually did is right here, it's broke. As you can see, I can pull it off. So you still have a solid line of heated line going in, in theory, as it's coming out, it's still heated somewhat. And it goes in like this and through, so it's actually easier for me to load and unload the filament. Makes it a lot easier. That's just one of my, my little tips for you guys. But in conclusion, would I recommend this? Oh, definitely. Um, at the time of this video, there's three days, I think, until the Kickstarter event for them. It's the 15th of November is when these start up. I think it either starts on Kickstarter or it's ready for Kickstarter. But if you go to the Sunlu website, you can actually go on to the Kickstarter and see everything. Um, they just announced the pricing of it. I think there was four different brackets, depending on what you did with it. But I can't complain. Everything that I've done with it and printed with, I'm talking beautiful quality just from the dryer doing this. And they're awesome. I mean, this is all just from using the dryer to see how they turned out. Prior to that, this is what I was getting with stuff like this. I know it doesn't look like much, but that's what it was doing. I was having so many issues. It wasn't even my printer is what I thought. It was my filament. My, all my filament was wet or damp or moisture. This one's not a good example. But, but I have all kinds of stuff that I've printed. This was one that I printed. And you can still see there's things wrong with it in the print. But with the dryer taking that extra little bit of moisture out... My prints come out almost flawless now. I'm shocked by it. They're just... It, I mean... If anything, just for drying your filament out, it works great. But... I can't complain. I highly recommend one. I know there's probably going to be some out there that's a little bit cheaper than this. Because I saw some of the pricing, but... Well worth it in the long run. So... I give it two big thumbs up. And thank you, Sun Lu, for giving me the opportunity to make a review of this thing as a first timer's experience with a filament dryer. <laughs> I really need more of them now. I'll probably get another one for my big printer over here. So I'll catch you guys on the next review.